A few weeks ago, I was talking about that big scary word, pitching, and I was talking about it in paper form, the pitch document. But today, I'd like to take that off the page and talk about how to turn it into a dynamic pitch video. A lot of people are doing these these days because I think people really do have a shorter attention span. Giving them something to watch is gonna do two things really well. It's gonna respect their time and it's gonna greatly demonstrate the look and the feel of the film or project you're trying to achieve. Okay, so I've just told you not to talk about things but show them. So I better pause for a moment and stop talking about it and show you a little piece of what these pitch videos look like. This one's from my second screenplay that I ever wrote and it's called Switchblade Electric. Switchblade Electric is the story of a woman with an incredible secret. She's a detective in a futuristic police force and her job is to hunt down criminals who have bionic modifications. Her secret is that she has these bionic modifications herself because she grew up in the world of the gangs. It's this secrecy that gets her partner killed. So she vows to watch over her partner's orphan son, a kid named Tanner who's drawn towards the gang lifestyle. It's this sense of paranoia and protectiveness that really drives Maria's story. What we're trying to do is right there in the title. It's designed to be two very contrasting words because it's two very contrasting ideas. Two types of movies that in a way clash but also fit so perfectly together. There's the classical, more romantic crime movie full of switchblades and motorcycles and cobblestone streets. And then there's the future world, the new frontier that's a dark and dangerous place to be but also a vibrant and beautiful place to be. It's a very visual movie and it's hard to explain on the page what this movie would look like. That's why I wanted to do a pitch trailer here. This is really the first go that I had at creating this structure of pitch trailer. The process for these is I basically write a script. I record myself reading that script to camera and you know stopping and starting where I need to because I know that it'll be chopped up and the footage overlaying all those cuts will merge it all together. Then I go and find all the B-roll, which is all the footage from the movies and I cut that in. At the same time, I'm putting music in. Music from film scores, songs that I like, just putting it all in, making sure there's ups and downs of emotion in the story there somewhere. And then the final step is doing some of the visual effects. Again, I've talked about visual effects in a different video, but I'm not talking about anything fancy. Nothing fancy here. This is just really simple stuff. In a pitch video I did for another film, Inherit the Earth, it's about these kids on a tropical island with their families and the apocalypse happens. So fire comes out of the sky, there's all this crazy demonic stuff happening. And so I used footage from the trailer for The Impossible because I knew that I had this family with kids at a beautiful beach resort and they kind of look up into the sky and you know look around in fear as a disaster happens. In that film it was a tsunami but I knew that the reactions to that tsunami would sort of match what I was trying to evoke. So I then went and found footage of fire in the sky, footage of comets coming down and I put it over that footage so that the two layers were on top of each other and use a blending mode to combine them. It's a really really simple thing that involves no tracking, no digital compositing really except the click of that blending mode button and because I'm only using these shots for you know 10 to 12 frames which is less than a second I was able to get away with you know really quick evocative imagery. Sometimes it's hard to find footage from the exact movies that you're looking for. Maybe in your memory there was a scene that matched what you needed to show but you look at that movie and it doesn't quite match. So I found it very useful to look at tourism videos. Think outside the box. Tourism videos have a lot of sweeping beautiful imagery that weren't designed to be in feature films but they really do work in these pitch videos. If you've got a movie that's set in Hong Kong look at some Hong Kong tourism videos and use a sweeping shot of the city. There was so much footage of beaches and tropical islands and jungles that I was able to use. For Switchblade it was set in Edinburgh but it was also set in a futuristic version of Edinburgh or at least inspired by it. So I tried to avoid using anything that looked too historical and old world. I knew I wouldn't be able to find actual futuristic Edinburgh footage so what I looked for was nighttime stuff. Stuff with colourful lights zipping through the frame. Stuff with motion blur. You're using them for a second here and a second there so you can get away with just quickly evoking those futuristic lights without actually showing anything futuristic. It's what these individual pieces amass to, what they all become as part of the whole that really matter. Back before Arrowhead was made, I was invited to fly to Sydney and pitch to the investors and all they were asking me to do was stand up and talk about the story and give a bit of a verbal pitch but I knew that might not be enough so I made a pitch trailer. It was a very different structure than the ones I do now. It didn't have me in it, it didn't have me talking. It was more of a fake trailer style. I am a prisoner of a civil war I don't believe in. I have no allegiance, no home to escape to, until you came. I had a friend of mine, Mark Redpath, create a voiceover for me and then I structured the trailer around that voiceover using footage from other films. My computer helps me get through the days. My rifle helps me survive through the night. I'm hunted from the outside and from within. 
I had stuff from Mad Max, Starship Troopers, there's footage from Red Planet, all kinds of stuff. I tried to minimize the Star Wars stuff. I don't think there's any Star Wars because it's a bit too obvious. I tried to find more obscure things that people wouldn't necessarily recognize. I made a crappy CGI reef and put him into the frame next to Mel Gibson from Mad Max 3. We had previously made a bunch of concept art, so I took those into After Effects and slightly animated them to give him a little more life. I used a shot from Spider-Man 3 of a big sort of crusher pit swirling because I didn't know how else to demonstrate that. I basically just went back into my memory and thought, is there an existing scene that's similar to this? Coming out of an escape pod, is there a scene in a movie like that? Of course, Pandorum has that. So I went to Pandorum, looked at the trailer, and it was the voiceover that carried it all through and glued it all together. I tried to avoid using footage from the films themselves. I wanted to use footage that was in trailers and promotional material because if there is any kind of leeway in terms of the copyright here and the ethical questions of using other people's stuff, at least in the trailers and promotional material, the filmmakers have chosen to put it out there for the public to see. And I didn't want to delve into the films themselves and take footage from scenes that people should be paying to see. Looking back at it, it's pretty rough and it doesn't need to be that snazzy. I think there's an understanding that these mock-up trailers don't need to be refined. They don't need to look finalized. They're designed to pitch, but they don't have to be pitch perfect. I got up there, I'd never actually pitched a movie before in my life and I was pitching not only to the three or four people that were directly involved, but it was kind of like this situation where the whole office had said, guys, come along to the big Arrowhead pitch meeting today. We might be doing original content, so come and hear the pitch. So there were probably 20 people in the room and Sam, who's my DP, he came with me and Eric Mishila and Eric Johnson, who were the American producers that were buddies of mine that I had involved. We all flew to Sydney, we went in that room and I stood up and spoke and I didn't realize because I'm not that sweaty. I've been blessed with not very sweatable armpits. But one of the Eric's told me afterwards, do you realize how much you were sweating in there? And I looked down, I thought, oh, embarrassing. Aside from the sweaty armpits, the pitch went really well and I'm sure a big part of that was to do with this pitch video. It's not just indie filmmakers at the bottom level that are doing this. A lot of people are starting to do these, but Ryan Johnson, director of The Last Jedi, back in the day, he did one for Looper and it's online, you can watch it on Vimeo. He doesn't call it a pitch video, he calls it a clip o -matic. It's a bit of a dorky name, but it works. And what he did was he took footage from Seven and 12 Monkeys and a lot of other Brad Pitt movies. For some reason, I think he might have wanted Brad Pitt in his movie at this point. Again, similar to a little disclaimer that I added in the pitch documents video, I understand that we don't want to be stealing other people's work. So while Ryan Johnson initially showed the Looper clip matic fake trailer privately to pitch his movie, he's since put it online for educational purposes. And big disclaimer, guys, that's what I'm trying to do, show you how you can make a better pitch trailer using some of these techniques. I really do value the work that the original filmmakers put in, and I'm definitely against piracy and don't encourage that in any way. But I also really love encouraging other filmmakers, and I think you'll all find this method really useful. You don't need to put yourself in front of the camera if you don't feel comfortable. Some people might want to do the Arrowhead way, which was just a voiceover and visuals. But I will say that if you're not comfortable talking to the camera, you're probably not gonna be comfortable talking to people in a room, and this is much easier than that. So given that I think it's important to showcase yourself as a filmmaker and introduce yourself and who you are, don't be afraid to put yourself on camera. It is easier to put yourself on camera than to go into the room, which you probably have to do at some point anyway. This is not the only visual way to pitch your movie. Rory Robinson decided to make a narrative short to pitch his feature, The Leviathan, and it's an amazing short film. He hasn't made the feature yet, but it really does demonstrate what he wants to do. He made it entirely in CG, and it really knocked my socks off when I saw it. But there's no reason you can't go out and shoot a narrative short in live action if it means getting your movie off the ground. These videos aren't going to guarantee you a green light, okay? They're definitely not gonna make your film happen, but it's just another little thing you can do, not only to tell the story you want to tell in the feature, but to showcase that you have some kind of visual ability to tell a story within this three or four minutes of the pitch video itself. In many ways, it's a metaphor for those very real childhood fears, and we're going to capture that in a way that's cinematic, but also terrifying and beautiful at the same time. Experiencing this story is going to take you on one hell of a journey. That's it for this week, guys. I'd love to see some of your pitch videos. If you've ever tried this method, I'd love to see some, so share it down below in the comments. And let's talk about how they may have helped you pitch your movie idea. I've got another pitch for you guys. Subscribe. Please subscribe to the channel. It doesn't take long. It's really, really super easy. I'll keep making more videos knowing you like them and everybody wins. Thanks, everybody. Keep pitching. See you next time.